Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our deprogramming language series. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about associative arrays. So if you've been following this series, if you're subscribed, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, then we have talked about arrays and dynamic arrays. But associative arrays are arrays where we can access a chunk of data by not necessarily using an integer. So I'll go ahead and explain this, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is make the analogy that maybe if you're coming from a different programming language, you've heard of things like dictionaries or hash maps or hash tables. That's what we have in D. We call them associative arrays. So let's go ahead and take a look at this idea. So where I'm going to start us off is by just going to the documentation on the D programming language page, the language reference, and then associative arrays. And you can check this out after a lesson, but I just want you to see where you can find more information as always. So here it is. Associative arrays have an index that's not necessarily an integer. If you want to think about arrays where you have an integer as an associative array where the key is always a integer, well, that's one way to look at things. But we can have other things, and today I'm going to demonstrate why it might be useful to have a string, for instance, in our associative array as the key. And I'll go ahead and define those terms in a moment. But basically, the index for the associative array is something called a key, and then the type that is stored is the uh, value in that associative array. All right, so with that said, We'll go ahead and look at an example of some of these things here, but I want to go ahead and just illustrate again the idea before we dive into the code of associative array. And a common thing you can think about here where we have something that's not just a uh, integer for an index is a dictionary. For example, we have a word like cat here, followed by a definition. That's also a string here, a funny animal. And it would be nice to be able to refer to or index into some data structure, some dictionary, where maybe I have a bunch of these different definitions like cat and dog, et cetera, et cetera, and be able to, again, index by the keyword cat. So the nice thing is for D, these are built in for us, this idea of an associative array and how I can use it. That is behind the scenes what's going on is our computer is taking in, or rather the D language uh, runtime is taking in cat. It's computing some index for us into a data structure using something known as a uh, hash code or the hash of cat, which might give us some value here. And I'm just going to pretend it's one, for instance. And then inside another data structure, usually some sort of array like this, we'll be able to look at index uh, one here. And again, usually we index from a zero. So I'll go ahead and draw that out and then find the actual definition here. You know, a funny animal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's basically what's going on behind the scenes. Now, if you define your own custom data structures, which I'll show you how to do in later lessons, you will have to come up with this sort of hash code to figure out, well, how does cat, a three letter word, and dog, perhaps another three letter word, make sure that this falls inside of different buckets here. OK, so here we have a dog here and for its definition. I'll just put that it's something that barks here. All right, so you sort of get the idea of associative array and the status structure. Let's go ahead and just look at a few examples, get the syntax under our belts, and see how we do things with associative arrays in D. OK, so where I'm going to go ahead and start us off here is by just creating a uh, associative array here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here, and let's go ahead and work with the example that we have here, is go ahead and create something that's a string of strings. And this is going to be animals. And I'll just go ahead and leave it empty here. So this creates the actual associative array. And it's important to be able to read this. And I'm going to do um, at least two examples for us so that we can um, see here. But when I've got something that's a string of strings, then what I've got here is this is what's known as the key or what we're indexing into. And this is the value. Okay, so the associative array has this idea of a key and a value pair. Okay, we've got the key here, cat, which I'll again highlight, and the actual value, which is the definition. Now, the value itself or the key can really be any types, right? We can have different key types and different value types. You could have a string of lists here or some data structure, uh, like a dynamic array, for instance. So you can combine all the different data types you have. That's something important to know. But for now, we're just going to work with a string and a string. And then I'll go ahead and show you, uh, maybe to mix it up, a uh, string with int keys just to show things. 
All right, so at this point, our associative array, which is sometimes just AA, but I'll go ahead and type it out here, associative array or dictionary is null. It doesn't really point to anything. And you can print things out, which is a nice way to sort of go about learning uh, D um, arrays here. And we'll just see that we get an empty uh, associative array here. And I might change the terminology <laughs> with associative array or dictionary based off what's easier, but um, associative array is what we use in D. So let's go ahead and add something here. So for animals, if I want to go ahead and add something here, well, I index into it and we'll say cat. And then with the equals operator here, a funny animal. Okay, so let's go ahead and leave it as that. I'll go ahead and run this and we can see cat colon a funny animal. Again, the key followed by the actual value here. Okay, so simple as that. All right, so now let's go ahead and just see something. What can we do with this data structure? So when we uh, add, or really what this is an example of an insertion into our associative array. So if the key cat doesn't exist, then it will be created here. Now let's go ahead and um, when I demonstrate uh, this, let's go ahead and uh, say if I want to modify cat here, then I'll say a really funny animal here. Okay. And what I just want to demonstrate to you is that we don't get two different definitions of a cat. We just get one. We index into cat, just like when we had arrays and we looked at something at index zero and changed the value, it just changes that value. So again, it's doing the same thing here. We've just updated our definition here. Okay. So let's go ahead and annotate that. Update our value for the key cat. Okay. So this is what I'm indexing into, and this is what I am changing. Okay. Now, something that we might often also do with our uh, associative arrays is test for membership. So we might say something like if uh, cat is in animals, which is our specific uh, associative array that we want to look at, let's just go ahead and write line uh, meow here, you know, something fun here, uh, just to go ahead and write it out here. And we go ahead and see, you know, meow, we get that because it is true that we are able to find this key in our associative array. Now, something that you should know about associative arrays, because they're using this sort of hash code and, you know, they're trying to be a really fast data structure. If I add two things um, into this actual associative array, we don't necessarily know the order that's going to iterate into. But this checking if it's in our animals is going to be done, maybe element by element or looking at every key in our uh, associative array. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and expand this a little bit. Let's go ahead and add, uh, insert another key here. Let's go ahead and for our animals, let's put in a dog. And let's go ahead and say an animal that barks. Okay. And now let's go ahead and see what happens when we write out uh, animals here. And I'll go ahead and move this up a little bit uh, just so we can see. Make sure we save and we run our program. And now we can see again that dog here has been inserted. And again, it's been inserted after cat. And this is what I was talking about where we don't necessarily know the order that these elements are going to be put into the associative array. It's an unordered data structure. Okay. Uh, now, depending on your background in computer science, um, the performance of an associative array, so I'll just go ahead and put a little performance here. On average, when we access something, so I'm going to put sort of in parentheses the average uh, here, uh, average case is roughly O of uh, one time here for things like insertion and updating. Okay. And that's just sort of the uh, average case. Now you can dive a little bit more into it, but the reason again that we're learning that associative arrays and we liked arrays in the first place is they happen to be a very efficient data structure. Okay, so I think that's worth noting uh, in that it's really nice to have in the D programming language, easy access to creating this actual data structure here, animals. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this uh, as is here. And let's go ahead and expand here. Now, when I've been running this, I just want you to go ahead and notice the specific syntax here key colon and then the actual value uh, that we have inserted here. So if I wanted to initialize this animals uh, dictionary here, I could have, again, similar to the way that we initialized uh, dynamic arrays with the bracket syntax, I can add another key here, I'm going to put aux here, colon, 
uh, a big animal, okay? I know I'm not being very uh, creative here with my definitions, but I think you get the idea here, okay? So let's just go ahead and run this now, and you'll be able to see that uh, ox does indeed show up in our dictionary. And again, you can kind of see that these are um, in a strange order here, <laughs> meaning that we start off with ox, which is in the middle, uh, cat was inserted, and then dog was inserted. So again, no guarantees on order if you need to preserve order. All right. Uh, with that said, now let's go ahead and look at some other common things that you might want to do. So for instance, you might want to iterate through this collection, just like you might want to iterate through an array and see the data. So let's just go ahead using our for each loop that we've previously also learned about. And let's go ahead and just try to look at for each of our uh, animals. Uh, I'll just leave uh, this as A here. Uh, let's just call them uh, creatures. I <laughs> just have a different uh, name here uh, in our animals uh, list here. Let's go ahead and just try to write these out here. Okay, let's see what happens. And if I go ahead and do this, then I get an animal that barks, a really big animal, and a really funny animal here. Okay, so depending on what you were expecting here, um, you, you're getting the actual values here inside of our dictionary. Again, it's iterating through them in the order here. Dog, an animal that barks. Ox, a really big, a big animal. And then cat, a really funny animal. Okay, now what if I actually wanted to have uh, the actual uh, keys here? Well, let me go ahead and actually bring up uh, the help here. Um, from our uh, help page here, and I want to go down to our properties, okay, associate array properties, and we can actually get the keys if we want here. And we'll see that this returns a dynamic array, the elements of which are keys in our associative array. And you also notice that we can be explicit and just get the values in our associative array, okay? So let's just go ahead and uh, keep that open for a moment. Let's scroll down here, and this time let me do animal.keys, okay? So that's going to return us the dynamic array. And I'll run this and we'll get dog, ox, and cat as a result of this for each loop, uh, which is very, very nice here for us. All right, so now let's go ahead and just keep playing around with this. Now, because this is a associative array, what if I did something like, um, and I'll get rid of <laughs> creatures, I, I'd like to call that maybe just uh, values is a better way to call it. But I actually can do something like key comma value here. And let's actually see what happens here if I do key uh, and try to write out the line here actually for a key in the value. And in this case, you'll get dog an animal that barks. Now I didn't put a uh, space here, so let me actually show you this. And I don't know if I've shown you this before. Let's just put a few arrows here to indicate the definition. And I'll run this and we get dog an animal that barks, ox a big animal, cat a really fun animal. So again, this is how we can get the individual key and the value, again, iterating through our associative array. Okay, so it's very nice syntax, very clean to do. We don't have to mess around with a lot of stuff. D is very good at deducing uh, the types when working with associative array. Okay, so this is uh, iteration here. So I'll just go ahead and label uh, this example here. Iteration, iteration through associative array. And the last thing that I want to just show you is, um, well, two things, um, is really just the semantics here, okay, when working with this. Uh, and what do I mean here? Well, what I mean is that with associative arrays, we have reference semantics, okay? So I'll go ahead and write that word up here. Reference semantics are used with associative arrays. Okay, and that's something we haven't covered quite yet if you're coming uh, to the series and a new programmer and are starting from fresh here. But let me go ahead and just show you what that means here. So what I can go ahead and do is just create another animals two here. And I'll go ahead and use auto something that we've used in previous lessons and assign it to animals here. Okay, so what happens then when I write line animals two here? Okay. And I want you to think about this for a little bit because at this point, when I'm assigning animals to here, and again, I'm taking advantage of auto, so it's again making it a associative array with a key of a string and a value of a string. Um, what it's doing here is essentially behind the scenes pointing to this animals here. Okay, so we know it at least has ox and a big animal. So the question is when I'm using something known as reference semantics or referring to something that exists, is if I'm modifying animals here, will that modify animals too? Okay, so let's go ahead and find out. Again, there's no mystery here. We can just go ahead and run this. And when I run this, well, again, I write out here animals. And then, well, look at this. 
when I write out um, to standard out through a right line here, I get the same thing. So essentially, this is pointing to the same associative array. OK, so it's not making a unique copy that's being modified. So that's something important to keep in mind um, if if that's, um, you know, the, the default uh, semantics for associative array. All right, so with that said, I just want to go ahead and show one more thing here. That's a little bit of an advanced topic. So if you didn't get that uh, all, you know, that's OK for now because we're going to revisit um, reference later. Uh, but now I just want to go ahead and show you one more thing since I didn't show you just to make it really clear here. And I'll go ahead and uh, write an empty line here, a few just to put a space here. Um, I just want to, again, make it very clear if you are creating something, say, um, a database with names here. Then you might use something like this, and I'm just going to call it, you know, uh, phone numbers, something like this. You know, not the greatest way to represent uh, phone numbers, but let's just go ahead and do phone numbers. And let's go ahead and put me in here, Mike, and one, two, three, four, five. I just want to be super clear because sometimes folks will get a little bit tripped up on the syntax. But again, remember your key, just like with regular dynamic arrays is a thing that's going inside of the brackets here. So I just wanted to show you something that wasn't a string in a string. So here is a string as the key and whatever the value is, in this case, some fictitious phone number here. Um, so don't dial me at one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, let's just go ahead and write out uh, our phone numbers here, just so you can see another example of associative array. And here it is. Um, and hopefully that makes things clear as far as syntax goes. All right, folks, so with that said, I hope you enjoyed this lesson in the deep programming language. Working with associative arrays and having them built in is just another thing that makes uh, D really fun to work with because it's an important data structure. It's made easy to use, and we can access properties consistently just like we were able to with dynamic arrays and get the keys, the values, and so on. Now, there's some other fun things that you can do later that we're going to learn about when it comes to iterators, like by retrieving the keys uh, by the keys or by the values and be able to play with these data structures. So if you've done some programming in other languages like C++, you'll understand uh, working with iterators. If you haven't, don't worry, we will get to that. So make sure you like and subscribe to this video or comment below if you have questions, as always. And thank you for your time and attention, folks. We'll see you in the next one.